Today, we're gonna to be doing some under eye fillers, commonly known as the tear trough. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a demo for you on how we do under eye fillers. This is something that I get an awful lot of requests for, so I just caved and thought, well, let me just speak about that specifically. The patient that we have for you today doesn't have a huge bag underneath her eye, she doesn't have a huge depression underneath her eye, and these are the two things that we really need to look at before deciding are tear trough fillers gonna work for you or not. So if the skin quality underneath the eye is not good, if it's very thin, and you can tell if it's thin by just pull it like this and see how long it takes for it to snap back. If it takes longer than about three seconds, then the chances are we're gonna to need to do some skin tightening treatments beforehand. And by that, I mean doing things like radiofrequency, microneedling, intracell, PRP, maybe even something more aggressive like Plexa, Plasmage. I personally don't do those treatments because there is a reasonable amount of downtime with them. I, I refer them instead to a colleague. I don't like doing the really, really gross stuff. Another thing that you want to look at is how much fat is herniating underneath the eye. So you can tell this yourself. If you have a big bulge just here, then it's kind of tricky to treat sometimes. Um, another way that we can tell is this gonna be amenable for treatment or not is if you look up, just see whether or not that fat bulges out even more. In fact, you see this an awful lot on Instagram. You'll have people doing their before pictures with the patient like this, which makes the fat look worse, and then their after picture will be looking straight ahead, and then the fat is tucked back into place. So it's not real. One more thing to consider when we're talking about doing under eye treatments is what is the color of the skin? So you can have a look and see if you've got a big um, bit of fat here, then underneath there, you'll often have a depression. So this depression will look a little bit darker in color. And when we do treatments underneath the eye by putting volume in there, so by putting filler there, this color will become slightly lighter because it's no longer in shadow. What we can't really treat is uh, darkness from sluggish blood flow around the eye. So for that, you'd have to look at doing treatments like um, carboxytherapy, for example, to improve the blood flow, PRP to improve the blood flow, Sometimes you can even do, for more superficial pigmentation, um, very, very light, gentle chemical peels. Mandelic acid with microneedling, for example, can work for this. There's also an eye cream called Cerna XO, which works quite well for darkness around the eye, and you wanna combine that by using a vitamin C. Lastly, when treating the eye using tear trough, there are two things that you should also check for. The first is, does it look better when I pull back here? If the answer is yes, then you need to do cheek fillers as well. The second thing is, is there a depression right here in the lateral part of the under eye? Now, both of these two areas, if you've seen my channel before, you will have seen that I treat these in preference to treating this area underneath the eye. And the reason for that is it just tends to look nicer because when we augment the cheek, um, it tends to lift this whole area up here and the face becomes a little bit more of a V-shape. In addition, when we treat just underneath the lateral part of the eye, it pushes the skin up so that uh, as we age, this part here gets dragged down and you can see more of the white underneath the eye. Whereas if we put filler there, it pushes it all back up again. So this patient was concerned by the space underneath her eye. If you look here, you can see that there's just starting to occur there, the separation of these two fat compartments. So we have one fat compartment here and one here. That will definitely be on my list of things to treat. The next thing is, there's this slight puff underneath the eye here on both sides. Now some cultures find that charming and they actually want to create this. Um, other people, not so much, and they want to eradicate it. So it's funny what we like to keep and what we want to get rid of. It's different according to where you live. You can almost see here that the fullness in the cheek is starting already to slightly drop down. So when we're looking for the highest point of her cheek, you don't really see that there's much here. So that would be something that I would treat. If I was being really picky, um, 
I would treat just here the angle of the jaw a little bit in the point of the chin a little bit across the chin crease a little bit underneath the base of the nose but the reality was we actually hardly did any treatment for her so let's go over and see exactly what we did so the first thing was use Juvederm Veloma along the cheekbone and I used one syringe per side and this is because the skin there, as I just mentioned, is already starting to descend. It's already starting to look a little bit on the heavy side. And we're using the Voluma there to try and lift everything and pin it back up again. Then the next thing that I do is use Juvederm Fall Lift in the front part of the cheek, just here, where these two fat compartments are beginning to separate. Then the final thing is using TSR Redensity 2, which is specifically designed for the under eye region directly in only one part of the tear trough because she was still deficient there. After that, I go back in and I use some tear cell redensity one with a cannula underneath each eye. And this product is more of a mesotherapy type product. It doesn't contain cross-linked hyaluronic acid. It just contains uncross-linked hyaluronic acid along with some vitamins, minerals, and some antioxidants, which helps to support the skin's health. Let's go over to our before and after. So this is what we came back with. You can see in the after picture that the shape of the face is a lot more V-line and that's because we've added this extra volume here in the cheek area. This little bit of separation there looks a lot more congruent. However, I would have liked to have seen more volume placed right here. I think it's probably not quite enough. And I'd probably also go back and use some of the other modalities that I spoke about um, for lightening the skin underneath the eye because she doesn't seem to have got a huge effect from using the Redensity 1, which suggests to me that something else, like maybe using the mandelic acid with microneedling, might be more beneficial for her. Okay guys, so that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the like button. I will see you here same time, same place next week. See you later.